click the subscribe button and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Juice Talks. I hate my childhood. I am very happy being an, a 37 year old. I never want to be a child again. I am Mansi and I'm a psychologist. I won the SRL award last year for my work. And today I'll be talking about my journey and how I got to this point. I have a memory. Um, I think I was about six years old. I remember mom was taking a shower and she had asked my nanny and my dadi to A carpenter was working in the room, fixing something. And he called me, Bita idharao. I went, he was playing with me, he was nice. We became friends in a matter of about 10 minutes. Soon I see he lifts up his lungi, takes out his penis and asks me to hold it. I hold his penis and I still remember, as I tell you this, you can hear my voice shaking because this memory triggers me off. I still remember his penis being warm, clammy and fat. I felt something, but he kept saying, I was doing a good job, I was a good girl, I was an obedient girl, I was listening to him. He was very proud of me. He played with me and I played with him. It didn't feel weird. It didn't feel odd at all. This continued for about 10 to 15 minutes till he was done with me. I have been repeatedly molested over the years till the age of 14. Some continued for weeks and months and some were standalone instances. I was molested by both men and women. How many of you here think that molestation is primarily done by men? and that we are all safe with women. You are wrong. We aren't. I am living proof. How many of you are uncomfortable hearing this story about a five-year-old holding a grown man's penis, about a five-year-old being molested by a woman? Put your hands up. Let me see how many are uncomfortable. Yes. People are uncomfortable because they know this is wrong. I didn't. For me, molestation meant I made a connection. These were often people I trusted, people I liked. They were happy with me. They gave me appreciation. They even gave me love. I spent a lot of time thinking I was just giving back to them. This was a relationship we shared. It was our secret. They would even threaten me. If you told anybody, nobody will believe you. Kisi ko bolna mat. I kept quiet. And then, this continued for years on end. Now a lot of you are probably thinking, why did she keep quiet? Is anybody thinking that? Why didn't she speak up? Why didn't she scream, shout, find this uncomfortable? Well, let me tell you a little bit about what leads children like us to keep quiet. I was a shy child. I was introverted. I was quiet. I was being bullied at school. I was not popular. I had no friends. In fact, I was being bullied by teachers as well. I was a poor student. And we all know what happens to children if they are not good academically. I was not even a 40 percenter. I barely made a pass mark. Teachers would mock me. Teachers would make fun of me. I remember in class two standing for hours in the dustbin because my teacher told me, you are garbage. You don't deserve to sit with other children. You are dumb. You are stupid. These are some of the things I heard throughout my academic career. I learned to internalize it. I thought I'm a failure. I'm dumb. When I was being molested by people I cared about, that was my happy space. Yes, you heard that right. That was my happy space. I felt at least these people appreciate me. I couldn't talk to mom and dad because I was a sensitive child. I knew mom was having her own struggles in a joint family. I didn't want to add to it. And I couldn't even understand if this was right or wrong. Look back into your lives if you have been sexually abused. Sometimes we're confused. Is this right? Is this wrong? This was before the days of good touch and bad touch. Before the days parents told us, come to us if somebody does this to you. 
They trusted people, we trusted people. I was being bullied, I was lonely, I was unhappy. Therefore, I allowed the molestation to continue. I didn't know what to do. I approached a teacher to tell her about the bullying, about the abuse I was facing, and she told me that, Mansi, if you ever tell anybody, nobody will believe you. Everybody will think, Bana ke bol rahi hai. That was the first and the last time I opened up. The only other person who I've shared this with is my husband, and today all of you. She told me that I was a loser, I was a failure academically, and I was looking for excuses not to study. And if I continued this way, I would grow up and be a drug addict. I have no idea where the connection came from, but that's what I was told. In fact, in class seven, my teacher stood me in front of an entire class and said, whoever wants to be academically successful, don't talk to Mansi. This is the girl you don't want to talk to. I don't know why I didn't say a word. I would just keep quiet. Soon I reached class nine, and one of the days when I was being bullied, oh, before that, sorry, I forgot to mention this, I started turning to food as a way of comforting myself. How many people here turn to food as a way of comfort? I think many of us, right? Food is a big thing. So I turned to food. I would go up to about one loaf of bread a day. I became 60 kgs at the age of 11 or 12. I was obese. And what happens to obese teenagers? They get picked on. They get bullied, right? And what happens when they get bullied? They withdraw within themselves. They become depressed, they become anxious. I would often get told by peers, oh, look at Mansi, she looks like a globe. Can anybody identify Africa on her? Can anybody find I India on her? That's the kind of things I was told by peers. I didn't say a word because they were right. In class nine, I had a meltdown. I had a nervous breakdown. I broke down, I told my teacher, I don't want to be her, I started to cry. This was after an episode of bullying. I remember she sat me down and she said, Mansi, when I teach math, I look at you and I say, this girl has the most beautiful smile I have ever seen. People, that was my first compliment. The first time somebody had said something nice to me. Thank you. Today, while standing there, all nervous, saying, oh my god, this is the first time I'm going to talk in front of people, I said, Mansi, you have a nice smile. That's it. You will walk out of there and you will smile at everybody. That was my first compliment. That started my healing journey. That created a crack in the self-esteem I had built, which was zero. I hated myself. If you asked me that time, Mansi, what do you want to grow up and be? I would have laughed and told you a failure. Nothing. I will be a globe. That's it. And then I went to college. Thankfully, in college, I made a good friend. Somebody who heard me out. Somebody who didn't knock my story. Who didn't tell me, oh God, itna bulti hai. Oh my God, so much negativity. I'm sure a lot of you have opened up to people only to have them run away, avoid you, not hear you out, right? Yes? Louder? There you go. So a lot of us share this story. And that was a healing presence. He asked me to see a therapist at that point when he heard my story. And I thought, therapist, psychologist, I am not nuts. I was actually offended. And then I also thought, Mere problems so itne bade hai I have not been raped. I have been molested. Something everybody goes through in India. All women go through. Everybody I know has been molested. Everybody I know has a weight issue and hates their body. Everybody I know has been bullied and body shamed. What is there to go to a therapist for this? You need big problems to go to a therapist, right? That's what some of us believe. You need big problems and you are, I mean, we're not crazy, right? I went along and then slowly I opened myself up to getting into a relationship. And like all relationships go, I thought, wow, great. This is great. But that turned abusive too. But thankfully, during that time, I found myself a volunteer job as a rape and domestic violence counselor. I belonged there. I began to hear stories. During the course of that time, I also took therapy 
and I must say therapy saved my life. My therapist made me understand what is self-esteem and how I can grow as a person, how I can overcome this. Soon one day, this person who I was in a relationship with strips me down and he gets angry at me for something I had said. He pushes me against the dining table and the edge goes inside my rib cage. That was the first time I stood up for myself. That was the first time I said, you cannot treat me this way. I am not, a, I am not an object. I am not a sex toy. He was angry. He threw me out of the house naked. I was standing outside our apartment completely naked. You know what I did that day? I came back in and I begged him. I begged him for forgiveness. I said, I'm sorry. I made you so angry that you needed to do this. His reply, I forgive you. That's what I did. And that's what abuse victims are like. They have no sense of self. They can't protect themselves. They can't, they have no self-esteem, self-respect. I remember the words of my therapist the next day. Mansi, are you choosing to demean yourself? Are you betraying yourself by standing for this? Abuse, being in a bad relationship, taking crap from people. That is all betrayal, self-betrayal, right? And then I decided, and I'm still working on this, raise your standards and people will meet you there. If you settle for this, you will get this. It is better not to be in a relationship. It's better you don't have friends. It's better you're not in a relationship than be in a relationship that makes you feel bad about who you are. That is abuse. Abuse is not only sexual. It's not only physical. It's also emotional, also psychological. Constantly having yourself torn down, your reality dismissed, that's abuse. That is being in a bad relationship. I completed my therapist studies. I became a psychotherapist. I moved here and I started working. Now we have a small center where we are six therapists who work together and we work with all issues. You name it and we work with it. Peer pressure, body image issues, eating issues, trauma, abuse. We work with everything. Because therapy is for everyone. Repeat after me, therapy is for everyone. Yes, there is no stigma to this. No stigma. Say, no stigma. no stigma. Yes. So I started as a therapist, and my therapist saved my life. I hope all of you will reach out and connect with a therapist if you are struggling. You can know more about our work at mansitherapy.com. You can drop me an email, drop me a WhatsApp. I'm more than approachable. Ask me questions. Get your answers. And today, before I wrap up, I invite you to do a small exercise. Everybody here has a story, right? Yes. Everybody has history, something they are struggling with. If you are up for it, take your phone, reach out to somebody. I would always tell you to reach out to a therapist. But if you can't reach out to a friend, say, can we meet? Can we talk? If you feel that makes you feel more vulnerable, Drop somebody a text saying, I know you're struggling. Can we please have a conversation? Can I meet you for tea? Can we meet for coffee? Or send somebody a compliment. Let them know what they mean. For all you know, you might be somebody's first compliment. You might be somebody's healing presence, right? Yes. Can you do this for me today? Yes. Lift up your phones. Let me see who's going to actually do this. That's quite a bit of people. Great. So please do this. Let me know how it goes. Log into my website, send me an email, send me a WhatsApp. Great? All right, we wrap up and remember therapy is for everyone. Yes, let's stop stigmatizing it. Thank you. Tell us what you think about this video and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.